Good morning, everyone. Welcome in. You are tuned into twitch.tv slash bedsores, coming to you live from my sick couch in the chronic illness autonomous zone. I'm your host, Alyssa, here with my co-host and transcriptionist, Earl. Let's get some rest today. Welcome to Puzzle Fighter, a.k.a. Puzzle Fighter 2, a.k.a. Super Puzzle Fighter 2, a.k.a. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. This is one of the big ones. Not only did Capcom distribute this game very widely, we're playing on the European release, but also this game within the competitive CMS just had a huge effect, tons of ROM hacks, a, a very active player base that we might meet a little bit later. So this is Dan. This is a color matching stacker with a twist. You can only clear blocks by getting catalyst blocks, which are the little orbs. Your goal also is to take gems and put them into rectangles or squares. You're gonna love this. Easy is almost trivially easy, but let's do it anyway. There's a meme in the community. There is a whole ROM hack for this game that allows the other characters to be balanced, but Ryu really only has the only competitive drop table. Hi everyone, so I was totally wrong about this. The top tiers are Donovan and Ken, and I should have picked them, but I misremembered and I didn't know, and I'm going to completely continue saying the falsehood that Ryu is the best. He's not. Sorry! Penis. So we'll be picking Ryu. So I want you to notice how beautifully this game explicitly and immediately gathers the trappings of a fighter fighting game. It is not sorry that is it is aping a fight a fighting game. So lines will be cleared together and squares will be cleared together. And do forgive me. My rotation buttons are a little off from what I'd expect. So that's a chain. Chaining matters. Just clear out some colors. The problem is that garbage you send to your opponent becomes stuff that they can use. It's nice to meet you. Is there a timer? It's just because he's close to dead. All too easy. You just don't know the bliss of the bombs. She's so cute. This game's really, really popular. Capcom spent a lot of money on this game and made something I think that's pretty good. That has been at least an enduring product. Determining combos is kind of difficult. I don't really know how to do it. So that sends 36 well, blocks you. to her. <laughs> Final stage of easy mode. The entrance animations are all so fucking cute. Everybody's got their own song, of course. This does have two-way rotation. Double tap to swap, some of these classic features that we've been noticing. She's got the Hadouken as well, you know? You gotta watch out for this girl. Try normal level. Thank you, Dan. What is Ryu Italian because he loves bombs so much? Hey, hard, normal, and easy sounds like my ex wife. Say it with me, Scrig. God, I miss her. What does it do that other puzzle fighting games don't? First of all, like, it has Capcom attached to it, right? And it's an official Street Fighter product. Number two, they had money. But even in addition to that, there were some real artists working on this game. I wish I knew more about the specific developers, you know. Um, this power gem clearing mechanic is perfect for building up big chains and combos. And in that sense, perfects the simulacrum of fighting games as itself. It's really good. It's really good. I mentioned the numbers on the garbage because I was trying to think about a redeeming factor to the other characters. If the drop table up by comparison, if we use garbage clears very quickly. So it's a color pattern thing mostly, right? Let's get into it. So they all have their different color sets that come in. The flat color, that's so good. This game looks fantastic. Why not? Honestly, what I should be doing is building to a longer attack. If I give her a non-lethal amount of garbage, she's just gonna do bad things with it, right? This is interactive. Like, I haven't even needed to say it, but this game has garbage canceling, right? If I send her that O2 of garbage and then she sends me 12, I get 10 back. It's just like making chain. Oh, she just came out of the ground. My buttons are reversed from what they should be, so I'm not going to be using the two-way rotation very effectively. I hope you'll uh, gather some forgiveness for me. If you don't, 
Don't tell me. You can you can blame me for the rest of your life if you want. Just don't tell me. Morrigan is crying? Maybe she shouldn't have come up off the ground. Two... Three... Easy. We got it, baby! And here's the intermission. Look at this cute little scene! No, oh... Yeah, I got it. I got enough to get her back. And that's the game. There's this push and pull, much like some of the Tyson Puzzle Dharma like garbage interaction games that we've been talking about. The push and pull of it is determined entirely by the counter. So like, you know that five blocks after you send a block, you're gonna have to deal with the blocks back at you. You can plan around that. That's, it's good design. Don't tell me you only know how to play fighting games. This is not the first time we've played this game on this channel. Uh, I loved playing as Felicia, who I believe is from Darkstalkers? Wow. 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 You're stoned? Get it? <laughs> Unlike Tetris, which needed sort of a bag randomizer system to mature, color stackers that use blocks of two length can effectively get their game design going while surfing off of more pure randomness. Which is interesting. It's fascinating. Right, you gotta, but I don't have enough to go in for the kill, so I sort of overcommitted, and now I'm going to have to deal with the consequences, i.e. I'm getting fucked. So if Donovan does a small counter, it's entirely just yellow and red, and if he does a large counter, then other colors are also there. Which, to a casual player like me, is like kind of hard to handle. Final boss, Donovan, who's got two people, Sometimes a person is two people, Liz. It's normal. You don't have to talk to me about that, man. <laughs> like, this game gives you a very formulated way that you can come from behind if you're just cagey enough and make the right decisions and bets. Like a fighting game, which is about all about bets. Well, cock! I guess no one can interfere with his plans. Okay, don't give him anything until you're ready for the kill. Never mind, give him everything right now because you're about to die. All right, everybody. So we've been playing puzzle games so much. All of these puzzle games have had two player modes. We haven't been playing them because it's just me here, but it doesn't have to be that way. Welcome everybody to Fightcade, which is a tool that allows people with netcode to play retro games online. I reached out to the Puzzle Wednesday Discord, which is a Discord that I hang out in, and let people know that I'm going to be streaming and looking for matches. So it looks like there are some folks around. We're just going to try playing some puzzle games. Jupy Jello asks, Liz, do you have friends? I thought you were one, but I guess not. Except. It's your girl Futurelist trying to give you a little bit of live casting of this match. Looks like deep into round one, Alyssa has a little bit of problems on her right side. She hasn't handled Ryu's garbage pattern, these vertical strips, very well. Looks like she's getting caught up on it, just little bits after little bits, managing to take her over and prevent her from stacking anymore. That's a round one loss. We'll have to see how this goes. Getting into round two here, Liz starts to make up some power gems. We'll see how that goes. A little bit later in the match is about to come up here. Fantastic. So Liz has let out some garbage onto her opponent, filling up their board intensely. They need to use that super gem to get rid of all of the red on their field, creating this interaction point. A little bit later again, Liz has these big strips of red and yellow that she's trying to work through as Lang gets caught up and finally loses. So it's now one round each into round three we have a lot of material on Lissa's side if she can figure out how to get it chaining and there's one two there was a power gem in there but it wasn't enough a little bit later again and the garbage is coming in but Liss has a couple of board position states that are useful if she can figure out how to direct this energy she might be able to take this fucker down a bit later again there's danger on both sides huge garbage coming in. Alyssa has only a brief opportunity to clear out these greens coming in on the right side, but Power Gem, Super Gem on the left side, still, just barely, Liss gets in under the wire to take the set. The person just said, I'll let, I let you win. 
The classic arcade experience. Somebody just being kind of a jerk. Fresh set coming in. It will be first two, three. We'll have to see how Liss does. Begin setting up her board with a couple of power gems. A little bit later on, we have those power gems full. Ash has not started off an attack pattern, so Liss just lets that loose, but it's really not that much. A little bit later in the board, that garbage comes back to her and starts to really trip her up. She's going to need a couple of very, very smart draws here. Luckily, she has that catalyst at the bottom left corner, clearing out a couple of reds, but it won't do it. Here in the second round, Liss has a couple of power gems set up and is going to attempt to fire one off with the tiny little two combo, sending minimal garbage over. Ash is going to be able to counter this off pretty easily as long as they have their head about them. So Liss is down to clean, but hey, this is close. And surprisingly, that's enough. You wouldn't have thought it, but Liss takes game two. Now firing off some gems deep in round three for the game. Huge garbage all the way over. That's the power of power gems and the gems of gem power. And that will do it to take the first game for Liss. Here we go to the second game. If Liss wins, she wins it all. Deep into round one, we have bits of garbage on either side. This weird overhang structure that you can sometimes get when it comes to this game firing off that super gem whatever the fuck it's called it's like a little diamond and that will be enough to rush in and grab the combo into round two now Liz starts to build up these power gems yellow and blue on the center of her board and gets off a little bit of a damage combo but will it be enough that's a warning but it's just 25 ash is going to be able to come back from that pretty easily as they begin setting up their catalysts so that when that garbage runs out they'll be able to counter back Alyssa still tries to harass a little bit more, but needs to actually set up a plan for dealing with all of this garbage that's going to come back. But it's not coming back. Not yet, at least. But here it comes, finally, roaring back at her. Ash setting up those catalysts to be able to get off quick combos when the garbage runs out. So allowing you to spread your cognition over the board, not even needing to think about it sending your attention over to a different area as Ash has this huge yellow catalyst getting in that's going to clear those two power gems in the center. This would be near impossible for Liz to come back from uh, if she wasn't a totally poggers gamer. Luckily, she isn't. And yet, here, that catalyst that Liz left there allows her to survive the brunt of that and start to try to find a solution getting down to the garbage that is left over. A couple of reds coming up on the left side and at the perfect time the red catalyst shoots down the left side and at the same time the yellow goes all the way down. She's got these big structures, these big towers, but will she be able to convert them? That is the question to see the answer of. These two blue power gems right in the center of her field, if she can just get that blue catalyst, she might be able to put Ash on the ropes for good. This is set point. This could be it. This could be it, but the blue catalyst isn't coming. There it is finally just one piece too late. All right. Match point one and one. This is Ash's match to lose. A couple of uh, super gems set off, and then these yellow power gems going off. Alyssa had set up a combo, but wasn't able to get it off quite. Still has this enormous power gem. A lot of garbage on Ash's side. Can't get down to the catalyst over there. Rushing in, rushing in, trying to get it over, and here we are. Alyssa takes the set. Ah! We won! You're pretty good. GG's, that was me? Oh my god! Ash Carnelian, that was a distinct pleasure. Thank you so much for playing with me. Final thoughts on Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. It's so much fun to get to play this with other people. And I'm going to try to keep doing that as, you know, people allows. I don't know if there is like a competitive environment, for example, Monster Slider. So I don't know if we could have done it there, but it is a distinct pleasure to be able to play this game with other people and show you how people, different people approach it, the psychology outside of the strict cantrip. Thank you for the follow. Outside of the strict one player progression versus CPU. I think Super Puzzle Fighter 2 is perfectly tuned. I can't find anything wrong with it in this moment. I just think it's that good besides the drop tables, but like nobody did drop tables well because drop tables aren't actually a viable way of determining characteristics. Sorry. F Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo takes the simulacrum of fighting games and just honestly perfects it. It's really beautiful. I like that there's a difference between combo play and thick gem play. Right. The sort of these two methods of interaction that you can get to richly. I want to pet Felicia.
This has been twitch.tv slash bedsores, coming to you live from my sick couch in the Chronic Illness Autonomous Zone. We've been your host, Alyssa, here with our co-host and transcriptionist, Earl. Take care and do your best. Chill out forever until tomorrow. Starting a game show called Guess That Dead Name and making literally everyone uncomfortable. You know, it's just gonna be like a trans comedy night, you know? And it's a game show, and it's Guess That Dead Name. The game show where nobody wins, even if they get it right. I'm Drew Carey. Alas, Drew Carey. I knew him, Wayne Bradio. A fellow of infinite jest of most excellent fancy. He hath awarded me the points a thousand times, and now, how absent in my imagination is victory. Thanks so much, Daggett.